In 1992, Black Sabbath had released what was supposed to be involved as the Tony Martin period for their album Dehumanizer. But if you look at the back, Tony Martin is not present. And that is because this was in the making through many difficult circumstances and to follow up their last album, Tia, which dropped two years prior, Tony Iommi was going through a lot and with Tony Martin himself being the longest running Black Sabbath vocalist since Ozzy Osbourne and to replace Glenn Hughes and even Ray Gillan for the album that would have been included for the Eternal Idol album, Tony Martin was going into a separate direction. By the way, this is the deluxe edition of the Eternal Idol, and if you look at the second disc, it does feature Ray Gillan. But anyways, this album, Dehumanizer, has been one of my favourite Black Sabbath albums, though unfortunately this album was very troublesome in the making right from the start. Cozy Powell had been going through a very bad horse riding accident. And here's what Cozy Powell had to say about that. I'd had an accident with a horse and was unceremoniously booted out the band. Ronnie Dio came back in and didn't really want me in the band anyway. I had turned down his solo album to stay in Rainbow. Maybe that's been a sore point. He got booted out of Rainbow and asked me in spite of Richie and since then has hated my guts. But I was invited back, and I tried to recreate the same spirit that was there when we did the Headless Cross. Unfortunately, this time, it wasn't quite there. I don't know why. Maybe people change over the years. There were a couple of things that weren't quite right. Then they brought in a producer who's never really done a heavy rock album before. So, without Cozy Pal's action for the follow-up album to Tia, and even with his brilliant drumming from Headless Cross and to Tia, Vinnie Peace from Dio, when he went solo, when he started in the early 80s, had to be brought back into Black Sabbath once again. And here's what Vinnie had to say. The Dehumanizer album, they were working with Cozy Powell, I wasn't involved yet, and then Cozy. It was going very, very slow from what I heard, and they were spending a lot of money on time and all that stuff. And at one point, Cozy was riding a horse, and he fell off, and he broke his pelvis. He couldn't play, so they said, Now what do we do? Let's call Vinny. So they called me. I go fly to England. This was in England that they were doing this record. Then we all hooked up, got on the same page again. They had about two or three songs written, not recorded, but written, and demo recordings, I think it was. When I got there, it was in full steam ahead. When I'm in the band, it goes quick. I'm easy to work with. We all get along well, and we started really knocking out these songs. We had a house in England that Ronnie and I stayed at. It was outside of Birmingham, and that's where we rehearsed. Tony and Giza would come over and we'd rehearse in the living room, you know? Small amps, small kit, and it was very productive. And then I'd record stuff on cassette, all the riffs that we had. We'd listen to them to see which one we'd work on. So that's how Dehumanizer was born, the rest of it. It started with Cozy and ended with me. And this is the first time that we see Black Sabbath with Geezer Butler back in the band. So this is the first time in 10 years the Mob Rules lineup has been involved with another Black Sabbath album. And for me being a big fan of Black Sabbath, I actually think this is one of my 10 favourite Sabbath albums overall. Cozy Powell was out of action from this pelvis injury and Vinny was brought back in and 
then Tony Iommi has decided to bring back Ronnie James Dio. And it was around this time too that Tony Martin himself decided to go into a separate direction. And he was making a solo album, Back Where I Belong. And here's what Tony Martin had to say through this experience. They fired me prior to the start of the Dehumanizer sessions, which by the way was a complete surprise. I didn't see that coming at all. In fact, I was walking out of the door to go to rehearsals for the next album, and the phone rang just as I was leaving the door, and my manager was on the other end of the line, and he said, You'd better sit down, kid. I said, Go on, what? And he said, They don't want your services anymore. I said, what? You're kidding me. I just didn't see that coming at all. It isn't going very well with Dio. I said, oh really? And he said, no, can you come back? And I said, no, I can't come back. I've already started doing my solo stuff and I've moved on. And he said, okay, okay. So then a few months went by and he called me again and he said, are you sure you can't come back? It's really not working. So they invited me to go to the studio when they were recording the stuff. So I went down there. I said, look, if I'm going to do this, I need to rewrite this whole thing. I need to take it away and sit with it and work it out. They said, we don't have the time for that. So I said, if I'm going to have to leave it with you, probably the best thing to do is just continue with Dio and then we'll talk afterwards. So even through the Dio period, there was connections, and I was still talking to Tony. So, not gonna lie, that I know that Dio has been praised for a lot of Sabbath fans, and don't get me wrong, his voice on this album sounded absolutely amazing, just as effective like on the other two, but then again, Tony Martin was involved into these sessions for Dehumanizer from these demo tracks and he did record these vocals through these cassette tapes but since Martin was technically still in Black Sabbath Iomi just really wanted to get this record done and with Dio's involvement it's to me really really ludicrous and awful that Tony Martin was used than giving him a lot of the credit. So Iomi has decided to think to himself, since Martin is out of action, he's just going to bring back Ronnie James Dio for the Dehumanizer record, while still Tony Martin was still in Black Sabbath. I don't know about you guys, but this is... Absolutely a stupid move. If a bandmate is out of action, I would personally find somebody else to work on uh, a time for a gig, like getting a, a dep musician. But in terms of making original material, I would rather wait. But since Tony Iommi, yet I absolutely adore him, being one of my heroes as a guitarist, and to me, the greatest metal guitarist of all time, has been very productive and so busy that Dehumanizer has been in the making pretty much when Vinny was brought back into Black Sabbath once again, and throughout the creation of this album, Tony Martin was making his first solo album, but I would still have to think that from the honesty that Martin had said these things through these interviews, I will have to say that my heart just goes out to Tony Martin because even if you are in a band, you can do your creative freedom, you can do what else you want to do, whether it's through... Uh, a different side project or a solo direction you would still be involved to be in a band but no Iomi has brought back Ronnie James Dio since the Mob Rules time and well the Live Evil era as well and to make this 
the first Black Sabbath album since, as I said, the Mob Rules lineup, even when Ronnie James Dio was just into Black Sabbath once again, getting involved with the guys, with the attachment onto Dio's involvement, this was the only time that Dio had to work with Tony Iommi since Mob Rules, and the creative experience was mostly positive. But then, after the album's completion, they decided to go on tour in promotion for the record. And then this famous incident that Tony Martin was invited by Tony Iommi when Dio was performing with Black Sabbath. And here is what, once again, Tony Martin had to say on that part. In fact, I went to the show in my hometown with Dio. Dio wasn't pleased at all to see me there, because obviously, Tony Iommi had invited me. Dio comes off stage, and I'm still backstage. He was not impressed with that at all. I just couldn't get anything that was going to sound better than what they'd done. I'd have to make it sound like Tony Martin. There's no point in asking me to do it if you don't want me to sound like me. I did try, and I did put some demos down. I did give it a go, but I don't think it could better really what they'd done, so we sort of moved on really. And with that being said, there has been more of a turmoil that Dio, I think, was was used. I still have a lot of admiration for Martin onto what he did say from his time, but to really think that Iommi would do such a thing to Ronnie James Dio himself, no wonder he decided to not do the whole tours in promotion for Dehumanizer, because this happened. In the middle of the touring in November, Ozzy Osbourne, who had been an absolute sensation as a solo artist, sold millions of albums worldwide, was going on tour. He was the main act, and then, guess who supported Ozzy? Black Sabbath, Ozzy's former band. And with the words and wisdom from Dio that he was not happy, he did not want to support the former Black Sabbath vocalist, and he was that angry, he decided to leave. I can't blame Dio's own angry words into what he went through once again, not only to see Tony Martin into a live show, but to support Ozzy. It was just too much. And no wonder that a few years later, the classic lineup of Black Sabbath would later on be reformed on their reunion period in the late 90s. So after Dio's departure, Rob Halford from Judas Priest had stepped in to do lead vocals to finish off the tour, and Rob Halford at the time has been bringing back a lot of beloved acclaim when Judas Priest released their classic album of Painkiller. My heart has just been really attached into Tony Martin for so long, but to really think that Martin had not been involved into this particular album, just imagine how would he sound after this awesome album of Tia, and to hear him once again if he would have been on this album. I think it would have been great. As much as I do love Ronnie James Dio, do not get me wrong on that, but Tony Martin should have made his opportunity to be working with Iommi if Iommi had given him a lot more free time for Martin to do his solo thing on his solo album and then come back to Black Sabbath with this record because there are some awesome songs on this record, some doomy stuff, underrated cuts and this, like I said, has been one of my favourite Black Sabbath albums overall in their discography. This would be the last time that we will ever hear Black Sabbath with Ronnie James Dio until this same lineup will be coming back in the mid-2000s, but under the name of Heaven and Hell.
with the clash of personalities to the the difficulty of making this record, I do feel sorry for Tony Martin and once again for Ronnie James Dio. And I have lost some, some respect for Tony Iommi because of what he did to Tony Martin throughout this point. And even to think that he was a shit performer live. That was just insulting beyond belief. I mean, they never said anything to me. Surely, if you've got a problem, the first person you should say something to is the person that's in the band with you. It sounds like a really stupid thing to say, as they didn't say anything to my face. And if that's the case, then more fool them for not saying anything, because, you know, we could have fixed it. I said to them endlessly that if there was anything they wanted changed, done differently, just to say, and we could fix it. But clearly, they didn't. They hadn't got the guts to, obviously. And to write about it in a book afterwards seems a bit daft to me. I'm not bitter about it, but it is surprising. It seems a bit stupid to say that after the event. Let me know what you think of this in the comments down below. For any Black Sabbath fanatic worldwide, please address your views on this. Let's get into a discussion. And, like I said, Dio was really strong on this album. But imagine if Tony Martin would have been on this album, besides that the demo sessions had taken place while Martin was still in the band. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll keep you guys posted for more videos in the near future.